Well, hey, everybody. Good morning. Pastor John here from New Life Church in Owaco, Washington, and this is the message for Sunday, April 16th, 2023. Uh, this morning, if you're joining us, it is the week following Resurrection Sunday, and last week was a fantastic time of celebration and rejoicing, and I hope that by the end of this message that this is a week of celebration and rejoicing for you as well. Uh, sir, last week, we sort of ended with a couple of hymns, and this week, we're going to start with one. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Uh, this is one of my personal favorite hymns, uh, and it talks about the majesty of God. It talks about how amazing He is, and how awesome He is, and just the true nature of the power that He has, the, the worlds that He has made, and how we hear the rolling thunder. When we see creation, it's, it's really hard not to see the incredible majesty and awesomeness of God. But even though we know that God is this incredible being that's really truthfully beyond our understanding, in fact, in our current finite state, the way that we just exist as humans, it's really hard, maybe even impossible, for us not to put limitations on God. We struggle to really understand who he is and what he's really capable of. In fact, it, arguably, it's only in the imagination of children that we can even come close to understanding the limitless majesty of a holy God. The psalmist writes it this way in Psalm 8. He says, O Lord, our, o Lord your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You have taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies and all who oppose you. When I look at the night sky and I see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority. The flocks and the herds and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims the ocean currents. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. As I was saying a minute ago, when we see creation, we see the awesomeness of God. It's in all of the natural wonders around us. And not just the big majestic things like mountain ranges and, and roaring oceans, although very clearly you can see the power and majesty of God there, but also in the small things, the, the little tiny things, we, we see uh, his delicate work, his artwork, sometimes amazing, even in just the insects and the bugs that are around us. We see his artistry. We see his creativity. We see <clears throat> all of that in biology and in astronomy and yet we can't even really fathom the real uh, the reality of God's majesty so science science points to God's wisdom in the order and the structure of physics and mathematics and again it it, it points to his creativity in uh, in astronomy and biology the hymn says, I see the stars. I see the stars. And even with that thought, we can't really even comprehend how majestic God really is. Because when we say we see the stars, no. No, we don't. You see, there are at least 100 billion stars in our galaxy and possibly as many as 300 billion stars. When you look at the night sky, 
in the most ideal conditions, you can see roughly 2,500 stars. And at most, there are only about 8,500 stars visible from Earth with the naked eye. And that's under the most ideal conditions. And yet, we stare at the night sky and we're amazed. We are overwhelmed by a few thousand stars in the night sky. And yet, now we know that there are more galaxies in the universe than there are stars in our galaxy. We're impressed by a couple hundred billion stars, and the Milky Way is on the smaller side of those galaxies I was just talking about. It's easy when you recognize the incredible width and awesomeness of the universe to say, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. I understand why the psalmist would say, what are mere mortals that you should think about them? Human beings that you should care for them. Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. Who are we? We're not even visible specks in the vastness of the universe. We're not even on a visible planet orbiting a sun that's even visible based on our visible acuity of the largest stars in the galaxy. For example, if you take Canis Majoris, which is one of the largest known stars in our galaxy, if you were just far enough away from it that you could see all of Canis Majoris, then the sun, our sun, if you put it right next to it, you can almost not even see it. It's a minuscule speck. And if it wasn't light, I don't know that you could see it. It would be too small. Now, take Earth and put it next to our sun. And it's microscopic. It's, it's tiny. It's almost too small to see. And now, find yourself on this planet, this, this Earth ball. Find yourself and... When you really consider the vastness of the universe, we kind of feel insignificant. Like, what are we that he should think about us? Yet, you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. I don't want you to go feeling all insignificant just yet. Because you see, God may be majestic, he may be awesome, he may be mighty, he may be powerful, and we can easily be overwhelmed by what we see of him in creation. But just as grand as he is on the macro scale, he is just as amazing on the micro scale. If you got your Bible, Romans 8. Starting in verse 31, what shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Now, just prior to this, Paul is talking about wonderful things, just God's work, God working things out for good for those who love him. But look at God's awesomeness. Look at all of the wonderful things I've been talking about, the amazing vastness of creation. <clears throat> and then consider if the God who's in charge of the vast universe is on your side, who could ever be against you? Who can stand up to God? But do you really want to talk about how awesome God is? Then look at his love. Verse 32. Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for all of us, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one, for God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one, for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us, and he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? 
Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. Listen to this same little uh, passage of text from the uh, American Standard Version, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or anguish or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Even as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Now, as I said when we started last week, we were celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. It makes you want to shout. It makes you want to dance. It makes you want to explode with joy. Because Jesus' resurrection, it changes everything. It changes everything about life. It changes everything about death. It changes everything about eternity. Jesus' resurrection accomplished something. But did something change between last week and this week? I mean, what? Because your knee hurts, that, that means God doesn't love you? Or, or maybe your boss didn't like the way you did something and uh, he or she had some harsh words for you. They said some mean things and hurt your feelings. And now God has forsaken you? I, I mean, you had a down day, and maybe some old temptations came running back, and you, or maybe, maybe you were just flat out persecuted. Like, you were persecuted for your faith. Does that mean that somehow Christ loves you less? Or that he cares less for you? Absolutely not. It's ridiculous. Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries for tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let me read that last piece again. Nothing in all creation. We were just talking about the vastness of the universe and nothing Nothing in the entire universe can separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. We serve a risen, living Jesus, and we need to act like it. Set aside this woe is me attitude and embrace your freedom. Walk in your healing, not in your affliction. When things get rough, I need you to remember who is actually on the throne. And when opposition comes your way, I need to, you to remember who's on your side. If God is for you, then you are more than a conqueror. When health challenges bring fear or weakness or worry or concern, I need you to remember who it was that made you to begin with. Nay. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Yes, God is majestic. He is awesome. He put the stars in place. He put the sun in place. He put the moon in place. But he also put the earth in place. And then he thought, you know what this earth needs? It needs a you. And he made you special. And according to his own scripture, he loves you very much. You are God's chosen creation. Jesus Christ 
died for you. And his resurrection can secure eternal life for anyone who puts their faith in him. God loves you. When you face hardship, that doesn't mean God doesn't love you. It doesn't mean we live in a fallen world. But he also rescued us. That's what the resurrection also accomplished. That even though we're here and we're currently separated from God, we don't have to be because Christ made a way. I encourage you to put your faith in him. Put your trust in him. Get into his word and read truly how much God loves you. It's a lot. It's a whole lot. Just as awesome and majestic as he is at the universal level, he loves you with the same intensity at the micro level. Right where you are, everything you're going through, he knows about it. He knows about your fears, your worries, your concerns, your heartache, all of it. And he's right there with you, and he wants to be your savior. He wants to be your friend. He wants to be your God. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for those who've watched, and I ask that you speak to their hearts today. Don't let these words be my words. Let these words be your words. Let them hear your love from your word. Let them hear your truth from scripture. And let them know that you are walking with them every day. And even when they feel lost or worried or concerned, I ask Holy Spirit that you come alongside them to wrap them up and let them experience your goodness and have an opportunity to know that you are working on their behalf. I ask that you let them see your providence at work in their life. Father, give us the courage to not only walk in, in strength with you without fear, without worry, but also to go and accomplish your will. Because your love for us means that we can walk unopposed. If you're for us, no one can stand against us. Don't let us be overwhelmed by the world we live in, but instead let us live lives as more than conquerors so that we can accomplish your will for your kingdom. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Hope you'll be back with us next week.